My name is Ndei Aisa Chinjai, and I'd like to start the introduction by saying that I'm a member of the graduating class of 1982 for environmental science and technology here in IHE Dallas, and it's something that I'm really proud of. <laughs> and I'm also now working with the UN. I am the Secretary of UN Water. And I'm also the chief of the Water, Energy, and Capacity Development Branch in the Division for Sustainable Development in UNDESA. Yeah, I think, you know, I found the Capacity Development Symposium, I actually find it very timely because of a number of issues that were discussed. In addition, I learned a lot. And it also, the sharing of experiences across countries, across regions, and also looking forward in terms of the development agenda, especially in the post-2015, I found that very useful. The discussions on, you know, strengthening of capacities, especially for possible sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. specifically on water, what that would entail, how do we really look at integrated water resources management, how do we look at issues of, you know, wastewater, also how do we build on the work that has been done on water supply and sanitation, looking into the intricate details of what that would entail in terms of both the technical skills and capacities related to assessments, related to also just strengthening implementation, which has a big gap and also just how do we monitor for results. But in addition, I particularly like the emphasis on the soft skills mm -hmm. and the issue especially of leadership. And this morning there was a very, very fascinating and excellent discussion on the whole issue of values, ethics, and mm -hmm. just integrity, which I think you know brought in some very, very good insights for me in addressing these issues. And finally, I think the emphasis on youth Mm -hmm. as, you know, an intergenerational issue and, you know, the need to look at moving forward the role of youth and how do we begin to address that, I thought also was very pertinent. Um, so can you explain a bit also um, about where you come from and what issues there are related to water and development? Where I come from, in SP, this is where I, where I come from as a person. I come from the Gambia. This is in Africa. And I actually started my work life on water quality, you know, monitoring, and this was for rural water supplies. Where I come from, you know, water supply and sanitation is a priority, and especially the provision of quality, good quality water at the rural level at the local level. The other issue also that is important is, is also surface water mm -hmm. and shared river basins because the Gambia has a river that is shared with a number of other countries. Mm -hmm. And this river has been impacted especially by climate change over the past few decades. And there's issues of salt water intrusion. Mm -hmm. There's also issues of mangrove dieback. And there's issues of the flow of the river reducing drastically. And this has impacts. It has impacts for irrigation, especially for rice. You know, there is also just river transport issues. And there's issues related to the fishery resources, which as a coastal country, we depend very much on for as a source of nutrition. So there's, there's also all those issues. And the other thing is that we depend very much on groundwater for our own water supply. And in, in this regard, the groundwater does have some natural contamination problems, such as there's a high fluoride in mm. one of the aquifers, which is a transboundary aquifer that is shared with Senegal. But there's also just, you know, oxid, the, the, the iron level in some of the, some of the groundwater. And as you know, groundwater can also be very acidic. There's all those issues. In addition to, there's just point source contamination of groundwater because of, you know, the, the, situa the situation of wells vis-a-vis also, the situation of the peatlet rains, etc. 
So there's a host of issues that are related to groundwater also, which we have problems with. And, you know, as the amount of water we have, as it declines, it costs more and more to mm -hmm. reach the lower aquifers to provide water supply. So do you think as a, a water professional also yourself, um, having been trained and capacity built, um, what do you think the role of UNESCO IG would be to uh, further encourage and support this uh, capacity development um, projects and initiatives on the ground? I do think that IG has a huge potential in actually doing a lot of what I would call experiential type learning and on the job training mm -hmm. in country. Because I remember, you know, after I finished, we organized in partnership with IHE a training session in the Gambia, mm -hmm. in West Africa. And at that time, it was Professor Maurice Larivier, mm -hmm. and he came with Dr. Klein, and we had a number of participants mm -hmm. from West Africa. And they took their time to interview each potential participant. Mm -hmm. They took their time to design this training course mm -hmm. such that it was really, you know, founded on what we were doing at the time. And I can tell you that the networks we built and some of the things we learned have stayed with us still today. So the whole idea of IG being able to go out there, being able to really find out what it is that is happening, what are the priorities here, involving, you know, the potential students in self-assessments, mm -hmm. especially, you know, on their capacity development needs based on what they're doing, being able to forge the institutional partnerships also so that maybe IAG can strengthen some of these institutions on the ground to be able to continue the training, you know, in partnership with IAG. I think to me, I see this as really a way for the future. So that it's not always that we all come here, mm. but really we forge the partnerships with the institutions on the ground. We do target, you know, a close network of, you know, young people that are upcoming out there. As much as possible also we include alumni because, mm -hmm. you know, I think that is also a great asset that IHE has. And all of us as alumni, I think we have a passion for this institution and we would like to carry the torch forward. And I, I think, you know, through such an approach, one can really maximize the impacts going into the future when I think the capacity development needs for water are even going to be much more urgent, much more complicated. So through partnerships like that, I think, you know, IHE can make a great impact. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.